Hello, students. Um, this is a case study in child protection. I'm your professor, Alaric Nordia, and this is basically just a little review of a case study to help you better understand some concepts that are explained in the lectures. Now, some of you have this lecture as part of your business ethics classes, and some of you may have this as part of your social welfare classes, but um, basically the information uh, is just to give you a little bit more background knowledge and uh, and help with that. So when it comes to child protection, obviously, as a social welfare worker, you are obliged to report as a mandatory reporter um, whenever you come across any evidence of uh, child abuse in any form. Uh, and obviously, some of you will be going into the business sector and the rules and regulations in the law uh, governing online child exploitation in Korea are very strict. So you are also required to mandatorily report any uh, such materials to the Korea Cyber uh, Police Unit who are very, very good at investigating this sort of thing. So let's carry on. We're going to actually have a look now at a, at a U.S. case. I thought it would be interesting to look at a kind of a very open and closed case where the details were really quite obvious. So this was an illegal business and child exploitation as well as child trafficking um, business. So they had the online business part, but in real life they were also abusing children. So this falls under both categories of um, what the students are studying here. So this is from the Department of Justice. I'll just get my pen out just a moment. Where has that gone? All right. So the Department of Justice, this is a public release. This was on May the 14th of 2007. And Boston man pleads guilty to charges in commercial. So this was a large scale uh, business into this child abuse material and uh, in Washington a Boston man has pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to sell, transport, reproduce, distribute and receive child abuse material e and one count of money laundering as well. Assistant Attorney General Alice F Fisher of the Criminal Division and the U.S. Attorney John L. Brownlee of the Western District of Virginia announced today. Now, this person here, Aaron Campbell Brown, entered a plea before the U.S. District Court Judge Samuel G. Wilson at the federal court in Renoke. I'm not sure how to say this name in Virginia. Brown killed Glee Lou. Can't speak English today. Brown pleaded guilty to two counts from a superseding indictment uh, return on March 28th of 2007. So the remaining counts include allegations of conspiracy to reproduce and advertise these child abuse materials, conspiracy to produce child abuse materials for importation into the United States. Um, so obviously... Whenever these kind of materials are crossing over borders, that is a more serious uh, offense, and that counts for pretty much every country. Transportation thereof, receipt and distribution, and also the sale of child abuse material um, and money laundering counts were dismissed. So not all um, the listed items are what this person was found guilty for. They were, however, found guilty for the following. In his plea, 
Brown admitted that the conspiracy spanned more than five years. So this person is not someone that has just accidentally uh, come across these materials and uh, then reported it. No, this is someone that has, over a period of years, exploited children um, and run a business in exploiting these children. There is no way that this person can be said to be innocent. So this person was also involved not just in one website, but in a number of commercial child abuse websites. These websites included the one mentioned here and the one mentioned here, which were created, developed, hosted, and operated by Brown and then also his co-conspirators Gregory John Mitchell and Timothy Ryan Richards um, and a cooperating witness. So these three people were running a number of websites with child abuse material on them. And we often find that individuals that are arrested, they have um, actually gone and been involved in multiple platforms or websites that exploit children in this way. The, this website and this website contained child abuse materials and they offered memberships to the websites for a subscription fee. So their business model was a subscription model, um, preying of children and uh, exploiting and abusing children. Through his company, Neova Net, Aaron Brown, provided services and other support to these two websites, including web hosting. Um, and some could make the argument that web hosting, he would not know what's on there. However, it wasn't just that. It was much more. It was technical assistance and customer payment processing. Now, this is where you know that he knew what he was doing because Brown would assist subscribers to these websites in many ways. It was not just as if he was hosting it and never looking at the website, including not only processing their credit card transactions, as some would claim, but also troubleshooting access to these websites. Now, to be able to do this, all of you who here have experience with web development, you would know that this individual would have to have access to those websites and know what was on those websites. So this person is very much guilty. Also, he would field complaints about the nature of images. So if someone complained about what was there, he would also be in contact with those people. So based on this, there is no way that we can say he was oblivious. Actually, he was very much part of this business. He was also the person that was um, giving payments. So they would make the profit off abusing these children, and then he would pass on the payments to uh, these other co-conspirators that were working with him. So the office here says one of the highest priorities of the U.S. Attorney's Office is to protect our children from predators. Mr. Brown was involved not only in exploiting these children, but also making money from this horrible crime. Um, which we can we can say that uh, the first one is disgusting enough. Just exploiting them is disgusting enough. Uh, but then also making money off this. Um, and creating a demand for this is even more heinous and disgusting. We hope this case sends a message that we will aggressively pursue anyone involved in the exploit of children. And um, that that is a very good thing. The police are doing um, a lot of hard work, even in Korea uh, and globally, and more and more police are are networking together to help tackle these serious crimes. As part of the plea agreement, Brown faces a sentence of 108 to 135 months in prison and a fine of $2,500, $250,000, sorry, 
in a period of supervised release up to the remainder of his life following his release from prison. So this person is a very um, high profile, dangerous individual uh, when it comes to children. Definitely want to keep tabs on this type of person. On July 14, 2006, Mitchell was sentenced to 150 years in prison by the U.S. District Court of the Western District of Virginia for his participation in these child abuse offences. On October 26, 2006, Richards was convicted on 10 counts of uh, child abuse material offences in the Middle District of Tennessee, and he faces a minimum of 15 years in prison uh, at his sentencing in 2007. So these are the people that were part of the case. And it was conducted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, who have a lot of experience in this field. They're the, would say, the leading area in, uh, in, in investigations in the U.S. for this. Um, obviously, they're assisted by a lot of different groups. Uh, for their information and their intel. And they were also given computer forensic analysis by Chief to the Computer Forensics and Investigations, James M. Fottrell, and Computer Forensic Specialist Christy Witzman of the Child Exploitation and Obscenity Section High Technology Investigative Unit. Uh, so... All in all, we can see this person was very much guilty. If, <clears throat> excuse me, if uh, we have any cases like this, obviously as a social worker, uh, you would definitely want to report this as soon as possible. Uh, and you would definitely want to get any child out of that situation as quickly as possible. Um, we'll we'll go over how to how to do that in later classes. We've we've kind of covered it in some of our lessons, um, and then also for you in the business ethics area, it's very important to comply with online reporting so that this material can not only be removed, but individuals such as this Aaron uh, Brown can be brought to justice and the children uh, that are being exploited can be taken out of the situation. So it really starts with you. And you are, of course, legally required in Korea to do so. So that's just a little bit of a snippet um, and a little bit more background information on what we've discussed in our classes.